Hello everyone, Alexander here. Uh, welcome to another video of mine. Now, I want to talk about the requirements for becoming a flight attendant in the Middle East for one of the big major Middle Eastern companies, either um, Saudi Arabia or Etihad, Emirates, Qatar, so on and so forth. The requirements are pretty similar. They can vary a bit from company to company, but the basics are the same. First thing, you have to be 21 years of age. Let's say if you are 20 years of age and you apply for the job, you can get the job, but you can only join once you become 21. The second requirement is to be a high school graduate. You don't need a college, you just need a high school diploma. The third one would be to reach 212 centimeters on your tiptoes with your arm reached up. Um, in translation, that means about having at least 1.60 meters in height. That should be your minimum height. No problem for us guys, but for you girls out there, you must be at least uh, 160. Uh, although I, I remember I have a colleague, uh, she's like 1.59. Another requirement will be no tattoos showing while you are in uniform. Uh, let's say for me as a guy, if I have my shirt on, and I have a tattoo here, then I cannot become a flight attendant with that because it's showing outside of my shirt. For girls, there are many shirts that they're until the elbow here. So if you have a tattoo in this area, then uh, you will not be accepted as a flight attendant. Now, if you have a tattoo on your back, it doesn't really matter. It's not showing, so it's perfectly fine for most of the airlines uh, in the Middle East. Now, another requirement will be fluency in English, both written and um, a speech. So you must be fluent, you must speak proper English. Um, it doesn't matter if you're an English native or not. We have colleagues from all around the world. Okay, for me, for example, um, I can say I didn't learn English in school uh, as much as I learned from uh, from my environment. I surrounded myself with English, either movies, books, uh, reading materials. I always practice, practice, practice. I'll give you an example. My brother, he went uh, when he was in college uh, with Erasmus, there's a, it's a program. He went abroad and studied in France for six months. He had very little knowledge of uh, French language before, but after six months coming back home, he knew very well to speak French at a conversational level. So surround yourself with the language and uh, try to uh, speak with as many people as you can in English, uh, try to develop uh, your language skills. Also, for most of the companies, it helps a lot if you have uh, at least two previous jobs in a customer service field. Let's say you've been a waitress or you worked in a bank before or you even volunteering many times it counts. Just working with people and interacting with people, it definitely uh, helps uh, to have that in your CV and in your previous uh, work experience. Another requirement would be to be physically fit and to have your grooming spot on. Being physically fit, it's also a safety issue. So I cannot stress this enough. It must be done. Now, let's say another requirement will be just to, um, to blend in in a in a multicultural environment that be very important to be open to learn new things and to be able to move to your new base which be located in the Middle East so you need availability you need the flexible work schedule uh, basically you will live within the company and um, you'll have to kind of get past your old life to embrace the new one out here. Thank you very much for watching my video. I am a flight attendant for Middle Eastern Airline for about uh, three and a half years now. I hope you enjoyed my videos. Please subscribe and thank you very much for watching.